Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Hey, I've just got to tell you how thrilling it is to hear from so many of you through private messaging who are discovering our videos, whose lives are being transformed, who, and you're sharing these videos with others. You're sharing the message with others. And it's just, it's so thrilling. It's so humbling to be a part of your life as we share our thoughts with you. Oh, by the way, before we continue, I, I want to remind you, you know, May's almost up. We got a two-book special going this month, The Last Days Identified, and, uh, excuse me, Elijah has come, has already come, and then comes the end. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com. Right up there at the top, you'll see a banner. Uh, look, if you buy these two books now, here the month of May is almost gone. But if you buy these two books, it'll save you over $10. It's a great price. So take advantage of it while you got a few days left here in the month of May. All right. We're looking at the Olivet Discourse, Matthew 24 and 25. And as I shared with you yesterday, the concept of the apostasy is found here in Matthew 24, 10 to 12. Let me read those verses for you to remind you. Then many will be offended. And let me remind you, this has to do with the birth pangs of Messiah. This has to do with, with that Jewish narrative of the last days, that Jewish narrative taken directly from the Old Testament. As I've pointed out to you, Jesus even echoes directly Micah chapter 7 and verse 6. Right here in these three verses, Jesus was saying what Micah foretold for the last days. And it is for the last days. Micah chapters 4 uh, and 5 are dealing with the last days period of time, dealing with the time of Jesus' birth, dealing with the time of Israel's sin, the time of Israel's apostasy. So anyway... Many will be offended and will betray one another, and they will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Now, I gave you an assignment to go to Bible Gateway and to look at all of the English translations on verse 12. We're going to get to that tomorrow, okay? But I want, I want you to go there and I want you to notice the slight variation of translations. It may seem a slight variation, but it's a very significant one. So go there and look at the number of times the different translation appears. You'll find that it appears in a number, several different translations. And again, that variation of translation is very significant. Now, as noted, Jesus cites Micah chapter 7 and verse 6 right here in Matthew 24, just as he does in Matthew chapter 10. Micah predicted a time of great apostasy in Israel in the last days. In the last days before Israel's destruction. Matter of fact, it would be that apostasy and her sin that would lead directly to her destruction. In the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 59, by the way, I mean, this is one of many, many uh, passages that could be cited that predicted a massive apostasy within Israel in the last days before the coming of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 59, Isaiah 59 is cited directly by Paul in Romans 11, 25 to 27, in his prediction of the yet future salvation of Israel at the coming of the Lord out of Zion. For the Redeemer shall come out of Zion, for this is my covenant with them when I take away their sin, says the Lord. Now Isaiah 59 breaks itself down into three very easy headings and classifications. And in my book, Romans uh, on Elijah Has Come, 
a solution in Romans 11, 25 to 27. I, I develop these headings quite extensively. Number one, there is the accusation. Three times in Isaiah 59, 1 through 12, God accuses Israel of sin. Specifically, the sins of violence and shedding innocent blood. Number two, acknowledgement. In Isaiah 59, 10 and following, Israel said, Our transgressions are always before us, and our sins are with us. We are as dead men groping for the wall. We are as dead men in dark places. And, interestingly enough, Isaiah 59 echoes Deuteronomy chapter 32 of what would happen and what Israel's state would be in her last days. So here in Isaiah 59, the prophet is echoing the prophecy of Deuteronomy 32, which is a prophecy of Israel's last days, and Paul applies Isaiah 59 to his days. You catch the power of that? So, we have the accusation. We have the acknowledgement in which Israel, over and over in Isaiah 59, acknowledges her sin. But guess what? She doesn't repent. And as a result of that, in verse 16 and following, it says, The Lord saw, and it saddened him, the Lord saw that there was no man. He saw that there was no intercessor. So the Lord put on the garments of vengeance, the breastplate of righteousness, and the helmet of salvation. And he promised, I will recompense, I will bring reward to those who opposed him, salvation to the righteous remnant. This is where Paul quotes Isaiah 59. The Redeemer shall come out of Zion, for this is my covenant with them when I take away their sin. Now what's the point here? Okay? The point is that the time that Jesus was talking about in Matthew chapter 24 was not only, as I will demonstrate tomorrow, it was not only an apostasy within the body of Christ, but there was a massive apostasy within Israel. In Isaiah chapter 65, 6 and following, the Lord spoke of the time in which Israel would not heed His call. I called, you did not answer. And as a result of that, God said, even though I stretched out my hands all day long to a disobedient and gainsaying people, saying, Here I am, and yet they did not respond. Therefore, the Lord said, I was sought of those who did not seek me. I was found of those who did not look for me. Paul quotes that verse, both of those verses, in Romans chapter 10, 20 and following, to justify Israel's impending rejection and the ongoing calling of the Gentiles. Here is Israel's rejection and the calling of the Gentiles as foretold in Isaiah 65, and in verse 6 and following, the Lord said, I will measure your sin in your bosom. Now, according to Leupold and Young uh, and a host of other scholars, that was, that was the imagery of filling up the measure of sin. And as a result of that, what would come? Well, in verse 12, 13, and 14, the Lord said, the Lord God will slay you. So what do we find? The filling up of the measure of sin and judgment coming, the utter destruction. Now all of this harkens back to Deuteronomy chapter 32. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 5, it predicted that in Israel's last days, her latter end, she, it would be a crooked and perverse generation. Sound familiar? Yeah, Acts chapter 2. In Israel's last days, she would become the vine of Sodom. The vine of Sodom? Yes. And here's something remarkable. In Matthew chapter 11, 21 and 22, Jesus said in the day of judgment, 
it would be more tolerable for Sodom than for his generation. If the mighty works had been done that had been done in Chorazim and Bethsaida had been done in Sodom, they would have repented long ago and they would still remain. But it would be more tolerable for Sodom than for Israel. And finally this morning, certainly not finally insofar as the testimony of Scripture is, but nonetheless, for time's sake, consider what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12. When an evil spirit is cast out, Jesus said it wanders around in dry places seeking for a place to dwell. And finally it says, I will return to my place. And it does. And he finds it empty, swept, and prepared. And he goes and takes seven other spirits worse than himself. So the latter end is worse than the beginning. And Jesus said, so shall it be with this generation. That was his generation. Do you see what both the Old Testament and the New Testament are saying? That Israel's last days, in her last days, Israel's sin would be filled up. That's what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23. I send to you apostles, prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you shall crucify. Some of them you shall scourge. Some of them you shall chase from city to city. That upon you may come all of the righteous blood of all of the righteous shed upon the earth from righteous Abel unto Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. And in verse 29 to 33, Jesus said, Fill up then the measure of your father's guilt. You see, that's Isaiah 65, 6 and 7. What Isaiah foretold for Israel's last days that would lead directly to her destruction. When the Lord God would slay her, was filling up the measure of of her sin, the ultimate filling of her sin. And thus when we read throughout the New Testament that the man of sin would sit in the temple of God. That's at Jerusalem. How revolutionary, how challenging, how incredible a statement that was. The temple is supposed to represent the presence of God. The high priest is supposed to represent God with man. And yet, Paul said, the man of sin sits in the temple of God. Apostasy indeed. Apostasy in Israel. Leading directly to her utter destruction. But you see, it wasn't just Israel that would apostatize, apostatize from the truth. Even in the body of Christ, as he is talking about here, Matthew chapter 24, hard times were coming. Challenges were coming. Challenges were coming from persecution, from false prophets, and because of general lawlessness. How massive was that? We'll find out tomorrow. In the meantime, don't forget to go to my website, take advantage of the two book offer while you got time left here in the month of May. In the meantime, I'll see you on the flip side.